Hi, this is your host Sapna Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us once again Gareth Jones, Chief Operating Officer at Center for Net Zero. Gareth, it's great to have you back on the show. Great to be here again. It's my pleasure to uh, talk to you again. And today we are going to talk about some updates on LF Energy's Open Synth community. Uh, before we talk about uh, news, uh, let's quickly remind our viewers what is Open Synth all about. Open Synth is a, a new open data community that that we at Center for Net Zero created in partnership with the Linux Foundation to democratize access to uh, synthetic smart meter data. And what is synthetic smart meter data? Synthetic data is uh, a fake version of, of real smart meter data. So, um, and the, the reason we're interested in, in synthetic data is because the energy system is changing rapidly as we, as we decarbonize. So um, from electrification of heating and transport to decentralized bi-directional energy flows from kind of solar and other generation, and also all kinds of things shifting consumer demand profiles from time of use tariffs to weather and various other things. And so to build the future energy system that we need to meet our climate goals, to uh, reduce emissions, balance supply and demand and so on, we need to understand evolving consumer behaviours and I need to understand what's changing. But the problem is, is that um, a lot of critical decisions that are made use data from the past. They use aggregated, out of date data. Um, and the primary reason for a lot of that is due to privacy. Um, Smart meter data, people's consumption and demand data is inherently private, and um, there are huge risks with, with using that data and sharing that data more widely. So this is why we're really interested in synthetic data. So what synthetic data does is it allows us to have data sets similar to real data sets that look and feel like real data sets, but don't have the privacy risks that you have with, with real data. Now let's talk about some updates that you have uh, around Open Synth Committee, what what is that? What's that? Yes, yeah, so the news we have now is that the the Open Synth model repository is now live. Um, we have taken the um, source code for Center for Net Zero's Faraday algorithm and released that into the Open Synth code repository. And um, what that means is that so Faraday is a generative AI model that we built at Center for Net Zero to create synthetic smart meter data from real data. Um, and so by releasing this code to the community, what that means is now that anyone can use the Center for Net Zero algorithms to create their own synthetic smart meter data from real uh, smart meter data that they have, whether public or private data sets. So we're really excited now that gives the opportunity for the community to start generating more and more data and sharing that with, with the rest of the community. What kind of growth have you seen of the Open Synth community in you know, these couple of months? Yeah, we've had lots and lots of interest in the community so far, which is really, really nice to see. It's still early days and, and we're only just releasing the, the code now. But despite that, we've had um, a number of, of launch events and, and presentations that have generated lots of interest from partners. And so we're looking forward to building this community and getting other people involved in um, generating their own synthetic data, using the synthetic data that we produce and generally collaborating on, on best practices and so on. And what kind of usage of OpenSynth, if any, you're seeing there? So uh, right right now, I think we um, we have people using our Faraday tool, the Center for Net Zero Faraday tool, which is not um, the code. That's the code that we've just published to the OpenSynth code repository. And we have a huge number of users from um, systems operators to industry, researchers, and so on, using the synthetic smart meter data for a wide range of different use cases to make better policy decisions or investment decisions or to uh, try and understand what the future energy system might look like. Um, and so this is based on, on the tool that we've released as Center for Net Zero. What we're hoping now is, is releasing some of this code um, and data and so on to the community and getting others involved will compound on that work and accelerate it further. And can you also talk about how people can explore and contribute to the OpenSIT model repository and what kind of folks are ideal candidate to get involved and how they can become part of the community. For the model repository, I think so we have released the code, as we've said, it's now available on, on GitHub and PyPI. Um, within that, there's a tutorial Python notebook that explains how to, how to use it, how to get up and running and to start 
building a model and generating your own synthetic data. The, the code is released under the um, Apache license 2.0, so anyone can use and adapt this work. So we would love to have people who are interested, who have um, smart meter data or are interested in generating smart meter data to um, have a play with the code, see what they can produce, start generating data, and, and ideally start generating unique um, synthetic data that we can that they can then contribute back to the community so that we can we can all benefit from those contributions um, for the for the community uh, at large I think what we would love people to to get involved probably the best way is to join the mailing list or the slack community and the links for which are available on the OpenSynth website at opensynth.energy and in terms of who, who we're looking to get involved, um, I mean, really anyone who has any interest in, in energy data, uh, particularly kind of demand consumption data. So if you are an owner of um, smart meter data, then we would love you to come and generate synthetic data and share that with the community. If you are a researcher or um, some other uh, end user of, of smart meter data, we would love you to come and try and use the data that we're producing and, and use that for your various different use cases and, and make sure that, that what we can do is, is actually use this data you know, for real world, real world purposes. And then ultimately, I guess it's to try and understand what are the best use cases for this kind of data. You know, I'd love the community to to collaborate and discuss more about best practices, use cases, what challenges they can solve, how they can best do that um, as much as possible. So, yeah, it would be great to have all of that as part of the OpenSynth community. Of course, earlier you we talked about, you know, what is OpenSynth data? Uh, can you also talk about how organizations are using it and... Um, why sharing this synthetic energy data so critical for the industry and for consumers? The main goal of using synthetic data is to overcome the privacy issues associated with, with using real data. So by, by generating, sharing and using synthetic data, we, can, we hope to accelerate the research of others and to help people have a better understanding of, of the future energy system and therefore to make better decisions, whether that's policy or uh, infrastructure investment decisions or other kind of um, planning for the future, we think synthetic data can play a huge part. One of the things we're very excited about with synthetic data is that it allows you to um, integrate that data with other associated metadata. So, for example, if you're looking at household consumption, useful other bits of data that would be um, helpful to have are things like the low-carbon technologies that are owned by that household or the building efficiency for the, for the property or other aspects of the demographic of the occupants and, and those, those kind of things. And the challenges with incorporating that data in real data is that the more you add metadata, the greater the privacy risks. And this is what synthetic data solves. It allows you to add these pieces of metadata without incurring those privacy risks. And therefore, the, the data that you end up with is much more useful um, than would be otherwise and much better um, data for predicting what the future energy system might look like. When you look at open synth or if you look at synthetic data, is it for specific market, specific countries, or it can be used globally? Yeah, great question. Um, so at the moment, the uh, the Faraday tool that we at Sensitive for Net Zero have produced, the, the version of that that's available uses data from Great Britain, Great Britain households. Um, but the vision for the OpenSynth community at whole is for it to be a global community to host data um, representative of energy system consumers around the world. So we uh, intend to continue to generate synthetic data from the various countries that we have access to households for and contribute that to the community. What we would really like to see is more people from around the world um, generating synthetic data from their uh, data and contributing that to the community and ultimately building up a large pool of not only um, a great quantity of data, but a huge diverse data set that is, is as, as representative as possible of the various energy systems and consumption around the world. Are there any policies and regulations to protect consumer data or there are not yet? Because this is kind of emerging field, you know, the whole, you know, the industry with the EVs and smart meters. We also have solar here. We also have, you know, uh, the, 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 the power company is changing all the setup here. Uh, or it's like industry, they are trying to do what they 
may seem is the right thing to do. So I think regulation will will vary around the world as to um, whether the data is protected, but certainly as there are um, privacy laws and so on will apply to this data, but there will be other um, energy sector specific regulation around how that data is captured, who by, who it's shared with and so on. And that, that will vary from, from country to country and energy system to energy system. The, um, the advantage of synthetic data is that it can, um, it, because it resolves the privacy issues, it also will likely resolve a lot of the other policy and regulation issues. But this is why we would like engagement from policymakers to make sure that all of these um, issues associated with, with the data are, are captured and so that, that consumers' data is, is protected appropriately. Um, and we also would like more of this data generated and captured. I think there, there are differing levels of smart meter penetration around the world. And so the more of this data that is captured, the more smart meters that are rolled out, um, the, the better for everyone, whether that's real data or synthetic data. If you can also talk about the workings, if possible, of OpenSyn model, how close it, is it to the real data? What kind of insights it produces? And what value do players see? And who are the players? Who are the stakeholders who are interested in this synthetic data? For how, how the algorithms work to generate synthetic data? Well, one thing to say is that the we hope the community will produce many different algorithms for generating synthetic data. We have contributed the Center for Net Zero Faraday algorithm, but we do hope that others will improve upon that and also contribute their own algorithms, which of which I'm sure there'll be many for different purposes. Um, to understand how the Faraday algor algorithm works, we published a paper at the prestigious ICLR conference earlier in the year, which outlines the, the details of that algorithm. Um, but to, to, I guess to answer your question around how can we ensure that the data is, is truly representative of, of the real data, we, um, we recently released a paper after a piece of collaboration with some leading academics um, on what the definition of good looks like for smart meter data. And we, so we, the paper proposes a framework for um, evaluating smart meter data around three uh, main criteria, fidelity, utility, and privacy. And ultimately allows us to assess the smart meter data set to ensure that it is not only useful in that it, it can be used in place of real data, it provides real um, fidelity, so it looks like the real data, it provides utility so that it can be used in the way that real data would be used, but also protects the end user privacy, sorry, the, the producer's kind of privacy um, for that data. And this, this paper was a collaboration with, with leading academics from the University of Oxford, from MIT, Georgia Tech, and the intention for us working with the these world leading researchers was so this wasn't just a this is what Centre for Net Zero thinks this is what we want the, the community to come to a consensus on what good looks like for synthetic smart meter data so that we can encourage its adoption. We have been talking a lot about OpenSyn project let's talk about Centre for Net Zero uh, uh, can you talk about what kind of work you folks are doing any updates on the organization itself? Yeah, sure. So uh, Centre for Net Zero, um, we're a, a not-for-profit research institute uh, founded by Octopus Energy. Um, and we are pursuing, um, I guess, research for broader energy systems change, particularly tech-driven uh, change. If you look at our organisation, um, we have a team of, of data scientists and economists and strategists and policy advisors that when combined, we sort of form a mix of three different organizations in one. So we're, we're, we're part energy researcher, we're part tech startup, and we're part research to policy conduit. Um, and so we take uh, those skills and through our relationship with Octopus Energy, we take access to um, retail energy customers and their data. And we use that to help produce um, demand prediction capabilities. So um, the Faraday algorithm that we have released to OpenSynth was based on, on taking um, real smart meter data from real households and turning that into synthetic data. And then we do a lot of work with um, technology and data and modeling to try and, and um, form views on what the future energy system will, will look like for using technology to do that. We also have a team that runs um, field trials to try and understand what 
um, future consumer behaviours will look like in the energy system. So we work with consumers to try and understand how different um, aspects of the future energy system will affect them and how they will interact with that future energy system. And ultimately, we take the learnings from that and embed that into our data and modelling. So the data not only represents the trends of today's data, but also embeds the causal relationships and behaviours of the consumers of tomorrow to give us the best chance to try and understand and predict what the future energy system will look like. Can you also talk about what are the things that are in the pipeline of OpenSynth project? Uh, what to expect from the community and the project? Yes, we have uh, lots of plans for the community, as you would expect. Uh, lots of exciting things. I suppose the, the first thing that we are working on is that, um, well, to to generate synthetic data with the algorithm we just released, it's obviously a fairly technical exercise uh, to, to generate your own synthetic data. What we would love to do is lower the bar to access this data. So we will be releasing our own synthetic data that's trained on, on real household data sets um, so that others can use the data we've generated rather than needing to generate their own. Um, and that data will be conditioned on, on a number of different variables, including the property type, energy performance rating, and low carbon technology ownership of a large number of uh, households in Great Britain, um, which will allow users of that data to, to build up populations with a, a variety of different consumption profiles. So we expect to release that in the next, next few weeks. Um, Otherwise, for the community, we'll be looking to implement the evaluation framework that I mentioned in the uh, definition of good paper uh, to contribute that to the community and a number of other ways of, of benchmarking data sets. Um, ultimately, we're, we're looking to, to grow the community and get other people involved, get other people generating and sharing data sets. So we'll be trying to work with members of the community to, to encourage that. Um, ultimately, all in service of the, the open set community's goals, of which there are, there are three. Um, firstly, to uh, create a one-stop shop for synthetic energy data, where, where people can access all the data and algorithms, where they can discuss use cases and benchmarking and best practices. Um, so that's goal number one. Goal number two for the community is to encourage more people to create and share that diversity of data that we talked about. Um, so the more we can encourage other people to generate and share data, the better. And then lastly, three, um, the third goal of the open the community is to, to spread the adoption of, of synthetic data as much as possible, get more and more people using it for different use cases, and ultimately to help accelerate the, the energy transition. Gareth, once again, thank you so much for taking time out today. Not only give us an update on open synth uh, net zero, but the whole ecosystem and the role of synthetic data. Thank you so much for those great insights. And I look forward to chat with you folks again. Thank you. Oh, it was great to be here. Thanks for the great questions. And we look forward to having more people get involved with the community as it goes forward.